Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Today we are going to talk about Zachary Richache. I don't know if that's exactly how you pronounce it, but that's my American pronunciation. We're going to discuss what his potential impact on the court is. We're going to look at specific clips from his summer league games and discuss whether I think he has a long-term future, what that long-term future looks like. We're going to break this into three categories. We're going to talk about spacing, uh, four categories technically. We're going to talk about spacing, passing, his ability to create on his own, and his defense. I'm going to try and grade this essentially like I would if I was grading a paper. So like I'm going to give it spacing is going to be 50% of his value, passing is going to be 20% of his value, and creation is going to be 25% with defense being 5%. I'll discuss why it's those percents as we get into those specifics. But we are looking at his potential. Zachary Richache, let's go. All right, so first we're talking about spacing. The reason I believe spacing is most important is because without the ball in your hands, you still have an impact on the court, whether the person, your defender, needs to guard you or can sag off you. And so spacing is the most important because it impacts every single aspect of the game in half court, whether you have the ball or don't have the ball. So in this situation, we're going to see the ball handler comes off the left, and the help defender steps up, and he steps off, off of Zachary. So because Zachary is in the right location and is aware of where his feet are, it allows him to get a clean look, even though this pass is a little bit off target, still the right idea for the pass. And it looks like good form and a good shot there. Important to note about Zachary's shooting is in Europe, in the last two leagues he played in last year, he shot 56% and 36%, both of which are very, frankly, good percentages and with pretty high volume which means that A, he's trusted to hit those shots, and he did actually hit those shots at a pretty high volume. And while I think this shot is very different than the shot we have in the corner, the fact that he's willing to shoot it is probably a good sign for his overall accuracy. I'm not a hugest fan of it, but it does show a certain amount of confidence. But it shows a certain amount of confidence and a belief in his ability to shoot, which is also a good sign. He's also probably going to be a slightly better shooter as time goes on, simply because of how young he is. So that is also in his favor as well. So in this situation, honestly, like I would not be opposed to him shooting this first ball right here. If he's really a 35 plus percent shooter, like if they're like, instead of coming off there and just being three steps behind the arc, take two steps forward and shoot that ball if they're going to close out late. But if he can punish defenses, if they go under screens like that, that would be such a benefit for his game. So for me, his facing gets an eight out of 10 because he's shown to shoot really well in Europe. And while we haven't seen that much of him, frankly, in the NBA yet, I would imagine he's going to be a good shooter and he'll only be better as a shooter. All right, so the next category is going to be creation. The reason I have creation as the second highest category at 25% is because in reality, to be one of the better players in the league, like Luka, Giannis, LeBron, Steph, whatever, you need to be able to beat your defender in a way that essentially one-on-one -on -one you're going to have a massive advantage. Obviously, the way you go about this can be completely different whether you're Steph or whether you're Giannis. Like, Steph does it off-ball stuff. Giannis does it by running through people. So the way you beat them isn't super important, but the fact that you can beat them one-on-one -on -one is crucial. So here we're going to see Zachary come down to the paint. Okay, so he's going to get this ball across, and essentially he's got one-on-one. -on -one. He's got a decent amount of space and nine seconds of the shot clock to work. And I do not like this decision on his part. I, it's early in the game, so maybe he's like, oh, I just want to get a shot up, something like that. But I don't like that shot at all. So then watching this game, I was looking to see in particular if that was going to occur a lot, and it didn't, thank God. Okay, so that was the only one of those shots that I saw. And so in ball screens like this, this is a very good sign. Is he's got space to work with, and he's got Saar, who's a long athletic defender, frankly, right there. And he goes over him with a nice, like, that's nice touch around the rim. I'd be curious. I don't know what percent he shoots this at, but I like this drive right here. And so two really important things to note here is, one, he was definitely not the primary ball handler in this game. He didn't really handle the ball that much at all. At all. He was kind of off ball at best, which is fine. Like, that's fine. He's young. He's growing into the, into the positions for sure. And two, is with the Hawks, is he really going to ever be a primary ball handler? Like, not until, not for three plus years. So he's got plenty of time to work on this aspect of his game. Okay, so again, we see him with the opportunity to work one-on-one -on -one or create something out of it. We get a little bit of a kind of a ghost screen quasi. Okay, and he's not really able to create separation 
either with this screen or a defender off balance. He's definitely not able to create separation to get really downhill. And so he settles for passing the ball with four seconds. And I mean, it's a clean look, but I'm guessing that's not a very good shoot. So with creation, as of right now, I'm going to give him a five out of 10. I don't think he's that great of a creator as of right now. But that being said, I do think he has a very high ceiling because of his athletic ability and his awareness, which we're going to talk about right now, in his passing ability. And so the reason I have passing as the third most is because right now I think it doesn't matter a huge amount because he's not in a position where you have to be able to create to be able to find those open passes. So the passing right now only comes from a essentially transition or some kind of chaotic environment where he's able to get behind or whatever. And so if he's able to show passing and then he can get the creation done, that is going to, I think, really, really, really raise the potential on him a huge amount. So one thing I like is he has his eyes up. He's looking around, scanning where everyone is right away. The first thing he's doing is seeing where 35 is, seeing where the defenders are, and seeing where the offensive players are spaced out. And he does a great job of engaging the defenders here. Some players, a lot of things, what they'll tend to do is they just throw right away. Snap, 20's open, boom, snap the ball. Whatever, 35's open, just snap the ball. Instead, realize the defenders are paying attention to you and use that to their detriment. He gets the defender's eyes engaged on him. He says, look at me, I have the ball, I am the threat. And then he gets up in the air and does, a, frankly, a very good pass. I think he maybe necessarily doesn't have to make this no look, but whatever. It's on target. Right? So he makes this relatively on target. Maybe you could say two feet lower would be better, but he puts it in a good spot and 20 is left-handed so it fits out nicely and a good result. Because And this is the thing I was frankly most excited about Zachary is I think he passes the ball very well and was super happy to see this. And like this, again, what did we just talk about? The idea of getting the defenders engaged on you and allowing that to create open shots. And so this is why, frankly, I have very high potential on him in the future because of this passing ability. And again, keep in mind, he's super young here as well. And so his understanding of the game is only going to get better. I think it's probably going to get much, much better, which is a very, very, very good sign for how old he is. So again, we're seeing the ball get moved around. Ball gets swung to Zachary. Okay. First thing, shot fake. I love it. So many players don't understand that defenders react to things that you do. And so you give a little shot fake right here. Just let the defender. Yeah, if you're going to jump, knock yourself out. Get the hell out of here. We'll play five on four. Right? So he attacks again, engages with defenders, and does a nice, a nice simple pass. Like these passes don't have to be super complicated. He created the advantage right here. Like he did the advantage because nine, I think, made some silly mistakes. But he gets it to the inside, and now you don't have to go crazy with it. You don't have to make an automatic dunk at the rim. It doesn't have to be a, a lights out three no matter what. Simply put the defense in rotation and allow that to create open looks. And again, another open look created because of his pass. And so passing, I actually have as his highest category. And I gave him an 8.5 out of 10 on passing. Very, very excited about his passing. And then we get to the final category, and that is defense. And the reason I only give defense 5% is because I really think that defense is much harder to quantify. So it's harder to see the value. And it also, I think, changes so drastically much over the years. So like, I think his defense or anyone's defense can get dramatically better as the years goes on. Like it's not even a fair comparison between early you and later you. So here, one of the big the big reasons why I'm not, not super high on his defense right now is that he seems to kind of like be unaware at times. So here, 17's facing the wrong way because he's worried about Zachary stealing it. And so Zachary thinks for a second that Washington's going this direction. And so he, he starts playing defense on the wrong side, <laughs> which is like, like, it seems like a very rookie thing to do, but that's objectively pretty funny. And he's got Link to try and recover for it. But I think this is the, the issue. The issue is not going to be athletically. I think it's more of an issue of awareness and IQ on the defense. And so I don't see him being a huge liability guarding people one-on-one -on -one or anything like that, but... I also don't see him being a huge benefit, especially providing help defense. He'll be marginal, won't be great. Like this, I think, is a poor decision to try and double down here. Like he's pretty well stopped, and you have the rim protector over here, if anything. And like 
you reaching in here isn't going to accomplish much and you're simply leaving a player on the perimeter. Now, maybe number one's a non-shooter, like that's possible, but if he's a shooter at all, then that is not something. And so his awareness while he's off the ball, I think is going to be semi-questionable as well. Again, uh, the reason I don't think this is super crucial is because I think he'll get so much better. So he's coming down to help, realizes his person shifted up. As the ball gets out, he's really like, oh, I got to close out a little bit. And the offensive player does a great job back cutting here, frankly. And Zachary gets pretty aggressively left in the dust, and it leads to a foul. And so because of this, I'm only going to give Zachary a 4 out of 10 for defense. But again, this is my least important category by a wide margin, because I really think he'll get much, much, much better as a defender as the years goes on. So then my final grade for Zachary, and this is obviously subject to change depending on how much he gets better in certain areas, is an 8 out of 10 for spacing, which is good. Passing is 8.5 out of 10, which is also very good. Creation is a 5 out of 10, so struggling a little bit, but I think that has a lot of room to grow. And defense is a 4 out of 10, which I think is his biggest area of improvement. So that gives you a final grade of 7.15 right now out of 10 which I think is a very good score. I'm going to start trying to do all of these analysis where I give concrete numbers, and so that way we can look back at them and later and judge essentially how, how accurate they were. But in general, I am, I am very high about Zachary. I think he's going to be a good player. He's got athletic ability along with good combinations of passing and I think understanding and seeing the game pretty well. And so I think that is a very, very promising outlook for Zachary Ishoshay. I will also link right here a link to the video that I did on Alex Sar. so feel free to check that out for my opinions on him as well. If you enjoyed this, feel free to like and subscribe, but also if you had different numbers that you would have said or different categories, I would love to hear all ideas as I think that is super healthy and super crucial for all, all discussion, all nuanced understanding of the game.